Uh, I think I'd just end by asking, um, I mean, this afternoon you've managed to, throughout your answer question, and I, I will inevitably miss some people off, you seem to have dismissed concerns set out by the Governor of the Bank of England and the Bank of England, um, all of the work done by Treasury officials and, and leading members of a, of, of, the, of the Conservative government, um, I wouldn't support, but um, may have some have, have some sway. Um, you, you've also dismissed the majority of business concerns, and yet I don't think I've heard this afternoon uh, any sort of compelling evidence that would point to a better economic future outside the European Union. Well, is there any? Is there anything at all? Because I, I think for lots of people out there, I mean, you've, you've made some arguments that I would describe as sort of the good, you know, the good leaflet fodder and the good arguments for for people to weigh up, in, you know, in a discussion in, in the pub. What um, what I haven't heard are some really concrete examples and, and evidence to reassure me that the concerns that are coming through from business in terms of the impact on trade, investment, jobs, economic growth. I mean, these are legitimate concerns, and you may feel that your, your complaints about sovereignty outweigh those concerns, but how can you dismiss those concerns so casually without evidence? What it might be better to do is, I've just got one or two points I'd like to make, and I think I'd like to give you the last word, because that is a very broad uh, set of points to make that gives you a moment to reflect on them. Um, and also to respond to the points that I'm going to make to you. Um, you have made clear that vote leave is going to persist with a number of pretty controversial claims today. You've made clear that, you're, that vote leave is going to persist with the claim that the cost of EU regulation is at least £33 billion, pounds, ignoring open Europe, so it's an open uh, figure derived from open Europe ignoring the fact that Open Europe themselves have clarified that this figure uh, should be offset against the fact that their own best estimate of the maximum possible annual saving from regulation is not 33 billion, but 13 billion. Vote Leave is persisting with using the gross figure as the estimate of UK budgetary contributions, ignoring the fact that there is a rebate from which the UK has benefited every year been putting out literature, the vote leave has been putting out literature, maybe you haven't been distributed it in, distributed it into hospitals, but you've been putting out literature purporting, and many people would argue, purporting to be from the NHS, uh, while also badged up with vote leave, which many people would consider uh, misleading. Uh, you've accused the Bank of England and the Governor of scaremongering, Today, you've described Goldman Sachs as white boys bribing the EU to secure financial advantage. You've described Treasury officials, I think, as charlatans, if I got this down correctly, squeezing snake oil from economic models. And you've told us that Cabinet Office officials and Number 10 officials are engaged in threatening behaviour with people uh, with whom they deal all the time. These, among other allegations, are truly extraordinary claims for the campaign director of Vote Leave to be making. I'm going to give you the opportunity to comment on how, uh, on all of that in the round. I would only add one point. If you have some evidence to substantiate these claims, we'd be very grateful to receive it in writing. We're happy to receive it under parliamentary privilege. Um, there are certainly claims that would need to be pursued, but in their absence, we'd have to argue, that we'd have to come to the conclusion that they are themselves scaremongering or um, some of them fantasy. I'd be grateful if you'd comment. Um, just running through them, uh, I'm afraid I've such a bad memory. Uh, I'll, I'll forget some of the things you said, but I should have written them all down. Um, uh, in terms of the numbers, um, uh, I'll look at, uh, so what I'll do when I go back, well, not tonight, but I will look at the Open Europe uh, thing uh, uh, and, uh, and refresh my memory on it. Um, as I said before, I think that, I think that um, the, the, well, 
either you're wrong or there are two different things on the Open Europe website because what you're, you quoted to me is not the same as what I've got in front of me. So I'll check that out and see what the true situation is and get back to you on that. Uh, and perhaps you are right or perhaps there are two different pages on the Open Europe website. Um, in terms of the, the net figure, sorry, the gross net figure uh, issue, uh, uh, we won't be changing that, and as I said, I think that uh, given that the ONS describes it as a debit, I think everyone knows what a debit is in their bank statement, I think that's reasonable and we will stick to that. Um, uh, I would also point out that that is only the budgetary contributions. Uh, I think I, I've tried twice before to get select committees to do investigations into the EU procurement system and haven't been successful in getting that. I think it's a great, great topic for this committee to look at to try and get some hard numbers on. Uh, because I know from my experience in government, so does Michael Gove, that uh, Whitehall does an awful lot to keep this issue suppressed and a lot of money for taxpayers wasted as a consequence. Um, regarding the literature, I can absolutely assure you that no so, one... Sorry, can, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to clarify, you're suggesting that, the, that, 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 that Whitehall is deliberately suppressing data that might uh, illustrate cost or waste in EU Definitely. Procurement. You announce an investigation into EU procurement rules and you ask a Secretary of State to come and give evidence on precise numbers regarding the contracts which they sign inside their own departments and see how far you get. That's very helpful. I'm sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to point of clarification. Um, in terms of the, your point about the literature, uh, we have to agree to disagree in terms of whether it's misrepresenting anything. I certainly don't. No one has said, no members of the public ever say to us, oh, you're pretending to be from the NHS. So I don't think that's a problem. Um, I do think it would be bad if you get from the campaign with putting things like that in the, ho in, in, um, the hospital. Um, all I can say to, on that is that I absolutely 100% guarantee you that when I saw that story, I asked and said, has anyone from the office done this? Does anyone know of anyone, any of our volunteers who's done it? The answer is, we haven't got a clue if that even happened. If it did happen, we don't know where it came from, but it's certainly not us, and it certainly will never be us. So uh, I can reassure you on, 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 on that issue. Um, I'm afraid my memory's now given up on me in terms of the other things. Are there, are there any specific come things you want to remind in, me on? Come back to us in writing, but there was also a general set of points from uh, where streets... Yes, twofold question. Wait, yes. Yes. It, so you like him to repeat the question, or you no. know what it is? Um, two for question. That's the first part of your question. Uh, if you had asked this house and Whitehall and the City of London and the CBI in the 1930s about what the best policy was on deterrence of Germany, you would also have had a very, very clear, almost unanimous conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom that turned out to be wrong. Conventional wisdoms that span all the elements of government and bureaucracies are very, very, very often wrong. The entire conventional wisdom, for example, about the regulation of financial markets before 2008 was completely wrong. And a handful of people, often physicists, not economists, were the ones who were telling you all, don't listen to these guys, don't listen to what these big banks are saying, they don't even understand their own bloody products. So the Telling me, oh, well, all of these different organisations all say the same thing, that's not a very good scientific way of approaching this sort of problem, I don't think. Uh, qu qu quite the opposite. Um, conventional wisdom solidifying bureaucracies, and it's important to, cha to challenge them. So to your second point about the, uh, about the economics, um, we, of course we could go and hire someone to produce some spurious number about the trade benefits of leaving, leaving the EU and come back with a 4,400 figure on how it would all be great. And we've already had all sorts of, um, the, all the usual economic consultancies on the phone and emailing saying, if you give us some huge fee, we'll produce these reports for you. But the truth is the, the, these modelling exercises are bogus. Overall, there's a reasonable position to take that having a system of free trade and encouraging business competition is good for a country and it's also quite a democratising process. It limits the power of big multinational businesses. It limits their ability to corrupt the political process by buying political power. And our basic argument with Vote Leave is that after we vote Leave, we take back control, we will have a traditional free trade agreement with our friends in Europe, but without uh, putting on top of that a whole set of other regulatory 
uh, structures which tend to work in the favour of established players. Uh, you can take a different view on that. People at the CBI obviously do for self interested reasons, but that's our view. We think there is a good reason to say that that approach to the world will leave people a lot more prosperous, uh, as well as having a much healthier democratic system. And finally, we also think that if you look back at the, at the history of, of this continent, one thing's for sure, Europe needs pluralism. It does not need centralization and groupthink and all power being lumped in together. And Britain has unique institutions and unique history, unique culture. And after we vote leave, it will be good for Europe as well as for us that we encourage our friends in Europe to go down a different path, which we encourage other institutions to grow and decentralize power in the continent more.